All right, here we go. This baby is finally dead flat. Hey there, YouTube. So we are, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the real simple and quick sharpening procedure for our scraper here. Uh, so again, I have this, I discussed in a previous video that I grounded at about one degree and that was totally just ballparking it using a, a square and kind of guessing the deflection away from the belt up here. Um, so the, the plate is tipped away roughly a degree. Um, it doesn't matter. Don't have to be precise. But I'm going to register not this part of the scraper up against the belt, but rather this part because this is thicker. So if I hold it flat here, you can see there's some teeter totter there. Um, it would be nice if I had, you know, I don't know, maybe a piece of paper underneath here to support it. It's too much. <coughs> well, you get the idea. It would be nice to have it supported, but I'm holding it fairly firmly. Uh, with my fingers here, and I'm able to get a pretty good, pretty good grind on there. I put some deep scratches in the top here, and that's my reference, so that I always just have that facing up when I'm uh, grinding this thing, sharpening it. So, let's go ahead and turn this thing on, sorry for the noise. So we've made some uh, pretty good progress here, but I'm not going to lie, this is, uh, you're probably talking about five hours of work. Um, the entire plane is covered except for a little bit right here. Probably like an uh, inch and a half, maybe two inches long, extending right about to the middle of the plane. And it's kind of like a, an arch shaped, so it's not square. but. Uh, doing really well. I'm going to give you guys a little coverage of live action shots here. So again, I'm just going after the blue spots and yeah, this cuts really, really well. Yeah, so one degree bevel. Just, wow, just a night and day difference. Much more aggressive. Man, should have been doing this from the start. So when I'm looking at the spots on here, some of them are very faint and tiny. I'm going to leave those alone. And other areas of spots are very big and wide, and those are the ones that I'm scraping because it tells me that it's really high, whereas the, the very light dots are just barely touching the surface. And they, uh, they might only be making contact because how thick the layer of ink is. So we ignore those until they become more prominent. But these large dots are definitely making contact. And don't concern yourself with trying to remove 100% of the blue on the surface. Try to instead picture it like you're taking away, you're cutting the blue in half. So this is a really good point. Right here on both sides of the mouth, got huge contact so that's awesome that's exactly what you want that's the mouth is like the most important part of the plane to be making contact especially the area in front of the mouth immediately in front of it because as your planing material the front of that mouth actually serves to hold the wood fibers down while the plane is, while the blade is actually cutting them, and that keeps tear out from getting too nasty. So here's the surface plate part. So it's a two-step process that I use for preparing this to touch the plane to the plate. Um, 
to uh, figure out our topography here. So this has a very thin layer of Prussian blue on there. I tried finding this in like AutoZone, CarQuest, um, Murray's Auto Parts or O'Reilly's Advanced Auto, etc. They have valve grinding compound, which is part of why you would need this. You you know for engine building, you need this for uh, lapping in your valves. Um, but out of all the car parts stores that I could find, the only one that carried it is CarQuest. So if you're looking for this, keep that in mind, especially if you've got a CarQuest nearby. So I put a whole bunch of dots throughout the whole plane, rubbed it on there with my hand to get a reasonably smooth layer, and now I use this brush. It's just a super cheap chip brush. And I'm trying to focus on keeping my my hand the same elevation above the plane throughout the stroke rather than trying to do it like that. I want to try and keep the brush pretty uniform. And so I'm not sure if you can pick that up in the camera with the uh, glare from the light, but it's got a very, very nice uniform looking brush stroke pattern on there. And now the second step is this ink roller. And uh, I'm go ahead and roll that layer smooth because those brush strokes could create some false positive readings, so to speak, on the surface of the plane. So we'll get as smooth and flat a surface as we can. That should be pretty good. So now it is of utmost importance to make sure that the plane is super clean because you don't want any of that grit getting onto the surface plate. Not only will it scratch the surface plate, but it'll also give you a, a bad reading because it's going to create interference. And we want to make sure that we didn't accidentally advance the blade at all, so it's not sticking out, so we should be good to go. The issue that I've got is that this plane, number 5, is 14 inches long. My block is 12 inches long, so I can't go this way and get full coverage heel to toe. Now I've been doing corner to corner because I do get pretty good coverage. Uh, not perfect, the corners of the plane stick out, but I think it's pretty good. I just keep the front in the same spot and I pivot the back just a couple times. And then I do the same, I hold the back in place, pivot the front a couple times, and then you carefully pick it straight up. You don't want to slide it forward or backward or side to side as you're picking it up. Be very careful to just lift straight up as best you can. And that is looking super, super beautiful. I'm going to get you guys in the light so you probably can't see this. So again, looking across the whole plane from heel to toe, I've got very, very nice contact. Just dots speckled throughout. Um, there's heavy spots here where I'm, I've got a long streak where I'm making contact and I was not seeing that just a little bit ago so that right there is a huge stable sign of progress and then looking at this hollow area again here it's like an inch and a half two inches wide um, starting to see a little speck down here and another one up here and also on the inside so I'm seeing some ink on that one two third rib from the side. So that's definitely coming down. Yeah, so we'll keep plugging away. I'll get back to you guys when I've made some more progress. Uh, I might just go ahead and hold off until I've got the thing flat and I'm just doing finishing touches. So you should be able to make out that all throughout the area. Yeah, forgive the glare. Not much I can do about that. Because I feel like you wouldn't have enough lighting otherwise. But seeing the polka dots all over the place, that is exactly what you want. Because that indicates that there are high spots and low spots and that the entire surface is not exactly in the same plane. The low spots allow for wax retention in this particular case. Because uh, Anytime we use this on a piece of wood, it's pretty typical to run a little bit of wax on the sole of it and that makes a massive, massive difference in the felt effort 
required to use the plane. Uh, it is it's substantial, and since you're removing wood anyhow, uh, you're really not leaving behind much wax, and it's, it should not have any effect on on finishes. It, it hasn't been my experience, and uh, I'm definitely not the only one who uses wax on a plane. But <clears throat> yeah, this thing is is dead flat. That surface plate is what's called an A-grade plate, so it is flat to within one ten thousandth of an inch. And therefore it is reasonable to say that this is flat to within one ten thousandth of an inch. So the only remaining steps on this particular piece of hardware is to finish up the woodwork and sharpen the blade. Alrighty, well if you've made it uh, this far to the end of the video, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you hit the like button and subscribe, and uh, I hope you find my videos useful, educational, or at the very least uh, entertaining. Uh, so we're coming up on the Christmas season here for uh, 2020, what a fantastic year it's been, or not. Um, I hope you guys, uh, in the height of this whole coronavirus pandemic at least, are able to get together with your families in a, a safe and healthy manner. Um, yeah, it's challenging time for us all. So, I'm not going to be in your videos, obviously, for a while. I'm actually going to be spending time with my, my family down in Chicagoland. And, uh, yeah, hope to get a nice, uh, you know, a little bit of rest there. But I'll be back at it uh, the following week. So, take care, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.